once again. As you can see, I got a new little helmety thing. So hopefully this will help uh, show the um, show the board that I'm fixing better. So let's see if it does. So today we're going to examine the sync circuit. Because I'm fixing the centipede board here and I, I, I will give you a hint, I already know what's wrong with it. Um, but uh, so we're gonna we're gonna normally what I always say to do is check the power first. I check the power, it's fine. So then what do we do? We check the reset. Right? As you can see, the reset is pin 40 on that chip there. And you can see that's just simply low. That's stuck low. And if we switch to the CPU clock. That looks good. Okay. It looks uh, 1.5 megahertz, so we want. All right. What we have to do is look at the sync circuits, because I, I already know that's the problem. Um, but I thought this would be a good exercise, or people have asked me to show how to um, diagnose sync circuits. So um, this is something you pretty much need an oscilloscope to do. But let's take a look at the sync circuit via the schematics. Okay, so here are the sync circuits. And the sync circuits handle the, drive the timing of the game. Um, from everything from the CPU clock to the video output timings. Um, and it's actually really easy to verify if you have an oscilloscope. If you don't have an oscilloscope, it's really hard. So what happens here, we have the circuit that has the crystal at 12 megahertz. And you can see that's here, this little crystal at 12 megahertz. That feeds in as the, the primary clock to the horizontal sync counters. What these counters do is um, they take in the clock here, and at every output, 14, 13, 12, and 11, they cut the frequency in half. So it comes in at... Um, 12 megahertz on P2, which is a 74LS163, output pin is 14, it will be 6 megahertz. 13 will be um, 12, I'm sorry, 3 megahertz. 12 will be half of that, 1.5, 11 will be half of that, 750. We'll go over here to N2 and continue. Um, pin 14 will be half of the last one, which was what was that, 750? So this should be 375 around, and, and so forth. We're just gonna, every time we're gonna half it. Until we get to this M2. This M2 um, is going to be at um, 15 kilohertz, as well as uh, pin 14 and 13. And then the same thing happens is that actually, that output, um, pin 13, is the clock to these set of timers, P3, I'm sorry, not timers, counters, P3 and N3, which again are going to cut it down. This is going to be at uh, 15 kilohertz. The output on pin 14, first one, is going to be about 7.5 kilohertz. Then we're going to be 3.75 kilohertz. It's going to be just a little under 2 kilohertz. This will be about 1 kilohertz. This will be about, um, the next one will be about 500, 250, 120, and then finally 60 hertz, which is your actually, um, your vertical, your vertical um, sinking signals. That goes into this um, fast bipolar prom which goes into this LS-175 and generates ultimately your um, V-blank, V-reset, V-sync, and um, not V-blank and not V-sync. Okay, so it's very easy if you had an oscilloscope, just start at 12 megahertz and then out of every output, it's gonna half, except for this weird one at M2, those are both gonna be 15 megahertz, or kilohertz. 15 kilohertz, right, okay. 
Okay, so now we know we have to test P2, N2, M, N2, P3, and N3. So let's start. First thing is we're going to look at P2, pin 2. And you can see 12 megahertz. That's the input. Now let's go ahead to the first output, which is pin 14. It should be half of 12 megahertz. You can see it's 6. Move 1 to the right, which is 13, should be half of that, 3. You can see it is. Continue on, 1 to the right, pin 12, should be half of that, 1.5, it is. Continue 1 to the right, pin 11, again, it should be half of that, seven and a half, uh, 750 and a half kilohertz. Good. All right, let's move on to 2N. Again, pin 14 should be, I'm sorry, pin 2 should be 12 megahertz, it is. Pin 14 should be half of the last one from pin P12, which was 750, so what, 375 approximately? Yeah, and it is, and I'm going to switch my resolution down here. Okay, there we go. 375, move one to the right, pin 13. Half of that is about 198, 190, 189, 190, whatever. That's good. Move one, half of that should be about 95, that's about right. One to the right, 45, good. And then... N2, again, we can check pin, pin um, what is it, pin 2, um, it's 12 megahertz, trust me, I've changed the resolution, I can switch it back, there you go, see. So, now we're going to go pin 14, and this should be, um, this should be 15 kilohertz, pin 13 should also be 15 kilohertz, okay. So now we have to go to pin P, or chip P3, again, Pin 2 should be, um, this time it's going to be 12, I'm sorry, 15 megahertz. Pin 14, because that is driven from the other circuit, pin 14 should be half of that. should be about 7 and a half. And boom, nothing. Uh, odd. That's not good. It should definitely be about 7 megahertz. I'm sorry, kilohertz. Um, just for fun, let's see if the next pin works. That one also doesn't work. So uh, pin P3 has, chip P3 has to be dead. Um, this is common. These um, chips, the 74LS-163s, these counter chips, um, often are bad. And especially the ones that are, say that they are signetics. They're, these are all signetics. Signetics, if I ever have a chip, let's say I have a, a circuit that has like four chips wrong. And I don't know which chip it is. I usually like to figure out which one it is. But let's say I can't. Just just for, there are situations where it's just a pain to figure out. Um, if any of them are Signetics chips and the other ones are not, I pull the Signetics chips. And, and almost always that it actually has worked before, where I was looking at one circuit, it had like six, seven chips, and they were basically all connected. It would have been a pain to troubleshoot them. Uh, I looked, one of them was Signetics, pulled it, it was a bad one. Signetics chips always seem to be bad. Um, so, I, I hate to say that, but it... it it, inexperience is, is actually true. Um, almost all the chips I pull are Signetic chips, or I think Fujitsu sometimes bad. Very rarely do I see a bad Texas Instruments chip. So, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this, and hopefully that will fix it. So, uh, pull the chip out, put it in my chip tester. Just It's not really a chip tester, but it works. To, so it often will tell you if it's bad. Usually when they're bad, they're, it tells you an error. And it says it's good. And oddly enough, put a new one in, it worked just the same. So, uh, I was too quick to judge. But that's okay. We can look at the schematics and figure out what's going on. So, all the pins, the output pins on this chip were bad. Or they, they were they were low they weren't transitioning so what could do that well there's not much that could cause that to happen you see almost all the, the all the inputs are actually um, stable or, or, or fixed um, PR11 that means it's it's a pull-up resistor um, pull-up resistor so these input three inputs are pull-up resistors all these inputs um, are just straight to ground this is an output. Everything else, the clock is an input, but we saw the clock was okay. 
everything else is an output except for this V reset, um, which actually causes the counter to stop counting and go back to zero. And so that's the only thing it really could be. It's got to be this V reset because there's no other inputs that it could be um, because everything else is directly basically wired to either plus five or ground. So, um, we know basically the only way all those pins can be low if the chip's good is if, well, the, the clock is, is not there, which it is, because we've seen it, right? Or if pin 9 V reset is stuck low, which it is. So we got to figure out what's up with uh, V reset, why it's stuck low. Okay, so um, it could be either P3, I'm sorry, not P3, uh, the PROM at P4 or the LS175 at N4, um, usually the PROM, well, not actually usually, um, but usually it's a socket on that PROM if it's socketed. Um, but I took the PROM out and put it in another board and that board didn't work when I put that PROM in. And I took a good working PROM and put it in here and I know it, it um, solves the problem. So, um, I don't have any of these, the, these bipolar proms. They're impossible to find, and they're really expensive. So I designed this little circuit here, the um, W27C512 to 82S126, 129, and 131 converter board. Put one of those in, we'll turn it on, and we'll see. We actually have something now on the screen. It's not right. But um, that's progress, so we have to figure out what's going wrong. It looks like maybe we have a memory issue, maybe a, something like that. But let's go ahead and look at the um, those signals just to make sure they're there and good from the sync circuit. So now that we put that in there, on pin 14 we do have about 7.5 megahertz, I'm sorry, kilohertz. Go next, 4, 2, 1. Go to pin N3, pin 14, we have about 500 kilohertz, 250, 120, and 60 kilohertz, 60 hertz. Um, so that's good. Now we gotta figure out what's going on here. here. I'm gonna pull the pokey and see what happens. Still problems, so not the pokey. It's not resetting, and I'm not getting memory issues. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Something in the um, video circuit is is whacked. We'll have to look at that at some other time. If you'd like to know what the eventual fix for the graphics problem is, check out our Patreon site. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Please also consider sponsoring us at www.patreon.com slash arcades.